opportunity for what areas of research are possible in consciousness. And they're disparate talks. But you'll see, it will all come together in a common theme, I hope. <laughs> um, and um, we're only a little bit behind schedule, so that's going well. I'm going to introduce our Master of Ceremonies for the afternoon, who is our own Martin Fleming. Um, he runs the Science Philosophy Initiative. It's a think tank in England that does amazing work. You heard about his Atma paradigm. I'm trying to combine science and philosophy. Um, oh, we all know that um, philosophy, um, without some kind of practice, just becomes speculative. And practice without philosophy becomes sentiment or even fanaticism. So Martin has dedicated himself to bridging that gap quite successfully. And he has um, significant folks, um, including our own Stuart Hemeroff, who's here, be involved in the various forums he puts on. Before he runs an estate in England, um, anybody who has, in Wales, thank you. Anybody, anybody who's um, read Jane Austen or seen Downton Abbey knows what a big house is in England. And there was a state of Lord Buckman who passed on without heirs beginning of the 20th century and the estate fell into disrepair and um, Martin Fleming was able to obtain the estate and it's not the 25,000 acres anymore, it's only 60 acres now, and build it up into a retreat center. And it's one of the most popular retreat centers in that part of England and Wales for um, especially uh, retreats for those looking for higher consciousness. Before that, the very famous Bhaktivedanta Manor, he was president of that huge project for a dozen years. So, without further ado, and if anybody can find Mr. Fleming, we'll bring him in. <laughs> we had a great opportunity for a pantomime bit there, didn't we? He's mine! <laughs> well, that would have run right. <laughs> All right, well, um... Uh, Bob is actually uh, still on my thunder, as he, as he does with all his speakers. Um, and really my job this afternoon is to introduce a series um, of speakers to you. Um, we wanted to give a flavour of the scope of what we mean by consciousness in science. That we're not just talking neuroscience or philosophy or theory of mind, psychology, things like that. We wanted to show that actually this issue of consciousness really impacts all <coughs> scientific studies. So we were very lucky that we had abstract, abstract uh, submitted by quite a range um, of personalities. We had far more than we were able to fit in this afternoon, but we have chosen some just for their diversity, um, and I hope that uh, you'll enjoy them. They're kind of quick fire. We're having to keep each of these speakers to 15 minutes, which is a real imposition. And um, actually, it's a sacrifice on their behalf because they, many of them have traveled long distances um, and have much, much more material that they would have liked to have presented to you. And we have been very mean just to say, no, please fit it within the 15 minutes. So I hope that you all appreciate that they're here to give a flavor um, of the incredible work that they are doing in all these fields. So the first one I would like to introduce you to, and although I've just been practicing how to pronounce his name, um, I may not get it entirely right, but it's Mauricio Carrido, who's a um, doctorate, he's got a doctorate in quantum physics. And we've been talking a lot about quantum physics this morning, so it's nice to have an expert. Uh, 
I remember one um, radio, and after the Higgs boson was found, there was a lot of kind of um, media kind of uh, interest. So I got invited onto a, a talk show on the BBC to say, well, this is the God particle, what does this mean? You know, surely this, you know, what do you think about this? And we had some discussion, and various other contributors and philosophers would mention about quantum physics. And the scientists in the room said, oh, no, no, we can't have these people talking about quantum physics. They don't know what they're talking about. But at least Rithio does know. So he's a member of the Bhaktivedanta Institute for Higher Studies, based in New York. And I'd like to invite him on to discuss a particular project that he's working on, on the effects induced on the dynamics of decision making by the external environment. Mauricio Gary. Good morning, everybody. So um, the, the title of this, in, in the short way, is uh, Dynamics of Decision Making and the External Environment. But um, for um, you could also see it as creating a mathematical model of the gunas and the buddhi. Um, for those of you who don't know, there is the Triguna theory, which is a model within the Sankhya philosophy, one of the six uh, classical philosophies of India. Um, it is ubiquitous in modern Indian life and culture. And what is important for you to know about the Triguna theory here is that it describes the states of mind and its interactions with the external objects and situations. We have um, basically three gunas, the idea uh, of uh, sattva, rajas, and tamas, and we'll talk a little bit about it in the next slide. But um, wh what is important here is that this, uh, this Triguna theory, although it has been uh, there for thousands of years in India, it was statistically validated by uh, Wolf in 1999 and by Stemple and colleagues in 2006. So now we have something to build upon here scientifically. Uh, as I mentioned, there are three gunas, uh, sattva, rajas, and tamas, uh, that represent uh, the states of mind, such as clear thinking, calm, positive for sattva. Rajas has to deal with a racing mind, somebody that is excited, irritable, anxious, and tamas, clouded thinking, fatigued, negative, prone to depression. Uh, uh, we're all subject to these three. They're, they're constantly changing, so it's not that I am uh, somebody in, in sattva, rajas, or tamas, but I constantly change between these. Everything that is around us also, besides, besides the gunas being uh, states of mind, we can also see that they're, um, they're, they're, they're the basic uh, components of the world around us. So things like music, actions, people, everything around us uh, is made up of these and these affect our states of mind. So. Battle, battleship. Okay, very good. Somebody doesn't know what battleship is. <laughs> okay, good. At, at least, at least that. So um, the idea is that in battleship you have a screen, and every single point in that screen has two uh, coordinates, right? The x and y, right? So if I wanted to have um, if I wanted to do it in three dimensions, what do I do? X, Y, Z, right? And so every single point around it, every, every single point, I can describe it by X, Y, Z coordinate, right? Okay, so fair enough. Now, what if instead of saying X, Y, Z, I decide to have Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas, right? Okay, and have it go from zero to 100%. So now every single point in my space will be a combination of these three. Every single possible combination that I can think of will be a point in this space. Now, if I further ask that sattva plus rajas plus tamas equals 100%, so that it makes sense, so that I don't end up with something that is 300%, right? Uh, then I actually limit everything to just a triangle, a two-dimensional triangle. So that, that makes things easier. Now, uh, I can say that, let's say that, that my mental state at any point, at, 
at any uh, point in time is, is here. Like uh, we have here the, this, this red dot that I call it just the self state. And I can be here at this moment, you know, uh, maybe if you're, you know, because we just had lunch, maybe you'll be drifting, you know, towards this Thomas here. <laughs> right? The idea is that uh, it, the, the points that are near here are more in sattva, rajas, and tamas. So I, I can, you know, I'll fluctuate along this, you know, throughout the day, throughout the years, whatever. Uh, but besides that, there's the fact, you know, that I, what I call attractors. You can have something like a food attractor, right? Uh, or you can have something like a music attractor. Basically, anything that we come in contact will become an attractor towards that place. So, you know, uh, we just had a very delicious sattvic uh, food. So that will bring us a little bit, you know, more towards sattva. Uh, if, we, if we go out and somebody is going, going by with a car, you know, and it's blasting, you know, like, um, you know, I don't know, rage against the machine or something like that. <laughs> Nothing against it. Uh, you know, you'll be, you'll be prone to the other, the other gunas, you know, just because you came in contact with it. So uh, what happens is that uh, there's a force. There's a force here that, that is pulling us towards that. And what I did is I made a very simple uh, formula up here. Uh, to talk about that. It's a very, very simple formula. And I, all you need to know about this formula and is that it talks about the direction, you know, that it goes from my state to that attractor, that it has a specific strength as, so maybe, who knows, maybe food uh, will attract me in, um, in a different degree than uh, a book will do. You know, uh, maybe also, it, it will talk about how the further away I am for, from, um, from a specific uh, attractor, the, the more difficult it will be. So for example, uh, in the morning, I, I go out running. And you know, it's, it's morning, it's, it's sattva, and like that. When I come in uh, to, to have breakfast, I want to have maybe a light breakfast, you know, orange juice, toast, like that. I don't want like, something uh, like a big piece of pizza. <laughs> You know, uh, because that's, you know, the, the mode is far away from me at this moment. But maybe in the afternoon or evening, that piece of pizza may really look good. <laughs> Just because now I'm in a different place in this place. So the further away uh, one, one of these attractors are, the, the less the strength, right? And uh, finally, uh, there in, in this formula, there is something called that, that I call inertial mass. Basically, for me to be able to move, it will take a certain, in, you know, I have a certain inertia to be, to be pulled out from my, from my person place. So I call that I. Uh, having set up this, uh, I tested the model uh, using, uh, uh, sorry, I tested the model using uh, published work by David Wolf. He, um, he had a, a very nice experiment, uh, which was, uh, um, I, I'm not gonna go very much into it, but basically it was the, the effect of the Maha Mantra on measuring the gunas. Uh, we did a computer simulation of this, and uh, we came out with these, uh, with these results that, that you see here, uh, which were very, very close to what he got experimentally with, uh, with uh, human subjects. So now, uh, basing on this, we're, we're going to see how we can use that to, to talk about the mathematical model of the buddhi, the intelligence. Or in other words, the decision making. Why? Because intelligence is the mental process of uh, discrimination, knowing what is to be done, what is not to be done, right? Um, in decision theory, uh, it already has mathematical models. There's already there's already a, a whole branch of economics that is called decision theory, and they have mathematical models to describe how we make decisions, and also how to make decisions. So what we did is we took uh, one of these uh, models on how we make decisions. Uh, it's called the Leaky Competitive Accumulator, LCA for short, right? Uh, try to say that three times in a row. And uh, 
what, what, what it is uh, is this um, idea that if, you, if you're going to make a choice, you're going to start looking at the different options that you have. And as you accumulate information about these, um, uh, about these uh, things that are coming, then uh, some, some of them you know, will start looking better and some of them will start looking worse like that. So in here, what you see, oh, sorry. Uh, what you see is uh, three options going uh, in time. This is the, the time coordinate right here, down. Uh, and one of the options starts going up and up, and as, at a certain point, there's a threshold. When, when, this, um, when, when, this when, when any of the options hit this threshold, the first one to hit it, will, that's the one that you say, like, okay, I'm going to take that decision, right? So now, an, an interesting thing is that, uh, well, let me, an interesting thing about these models is that even though they are very good at describing many things uh, about the, the experiment itself and, the, and, and us, the, uh, they never talk about what, what is around us you know, how the environment affects us. So, and we know that the environment affects us definitely and strongly. If you don't have your coffee in the morning, you know, that, that, that may affect your decision. Or if you spill it over yourself as you're going into a, into a meeting, that is going to, well, call it, um, you know, not coffee, well, whatever. Uh, if, you, if you go into, into that meeting, it, it's, going, um, it, it's going to affect the way that you, that you make the, your decisions. Or, uh, every advertisement industry, they know, put a beautiful girl next to a whatever, and you're going to get more money, <laughs> right? So now what we did is we took the LCA model that, that I showed you previously, and we incorporated this, um, uh, th these uh, gunas. So uh, ju we just took some of the, some of the parameters uh, that, that they had, and we just tweaked them. With, with the gunas. What that, uh, what that gave us is the ability to start uh, including uh, something that, that is from the environment outside to the inner environment. The gunas talk, allows us to talk about the external environment in terms of tamas, rajas, and, and sattva, and to talk about our mental states in those same terms. So now you have a very simple connection so this is a, this is a very, uh, very powerful tool to talk about the external environment affecting our inv internal environment. And now that we are able to uh, tweak the, uh, the little parameters in the model, now we can talk about the model including the external effects of the environment. Things like uh, the loss aversion curve, where a person can decide, uh, well, you know, it, this is too risky for me to, 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 uh, to, to put money into. You know, can be uh, very much diverted by where you are in the guna triangle. If you're more in the sattva, you know, you're going to be more um, averse to losses. But if you go, if, if you're affected, you know, by, by rajas, you're going to go more into saying, like, I don't care. I just, I, I just need to do this. So if you, uh, if you want to be the most, um, uh, the most logical decision maker, what this shows is you, you better try to go into sattva and surround yourself around things that are sattvic. Uh, I will leave you now with just this um, uh, quote by Euclid called, the laws of mathematical, the laws of nature are but mathematical thoughts of God. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? We have two minutes. Yes. Okay. So uh, the question is: Can you f uh, also talk about this in terms of uh, repulsion? Uh, yes, we c we can we can talk about repulsion here uh, because uh, you know somebody that may be uh, in in very much in uh, sattva may be repulsed by things that are in tamas. So th th this distance you know, is, is real there. Uh, and and uh, there, there can be uh, a law of repulsion there. Yeah. We don't do it in this one, but we could add that. Yes, we could add that. Yes. Can 
yes, yes, you know, if I, if I take this, you know, and throw it around the people here, you know, I'll definitely get a different, you know, I'll, I'll change my environment, will, which will also change me. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, can, I can definitely make, make the, the, the world. <laughs> Sarah? Can we can we just change it with our minds? Is that the question? Uh, according to the to the Yoga Sutras, uh, yes, there, there is a there is a point when, uh, but it, it does require like incredible amounts of uh, practice uh, and training. Um, kids don't try this at home, uh, but uh, you 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 can get to the point where where you go into the Tanmatras, into the gunas themselves, and change everything to to be able to do it around um, yeah and have superpowers. Yes.